Y'all, I got so much hairspray in my hair. <laughs> Jacket to Jesus. Jacket to Jesus. Okay. Hi, friends. Misty here. Thank you so much for joining me today. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the end of my last fast. I'm going to be talking about what I've been doing since then. And then I'm going to talk about what's going on moving forward. So if you're new here, hello. <laughs> If you want to see any of my other fasting videos, just click the hashtag fat girl fast. That should take you to the playlist. Um, and unless someone else is using that hashtag, it should be mostly my videos. So I started long-term fasting back in October um, in my last fasting video, um, not a daily video, one of my last fast, I don't remember how I did 21 days or something like that. Um, I talk about the why and how, you know what I was doing exactly. So February, someday in February. Was it February? It was someday in February. And um, I started what I thought at the time would be a 40 day fast. And the reason why I said 40 days was because I've been having elevated blood sugar since the fall. That's the whole reason why I started fasting. In December, I did a 15 day fast and discovered that my Humira, which is for my rheumatoid arthritis, um, was causing hyperglycemia. So I could do the dodo bird. I stopped taking it, <laughs> which meant in January when I was doing my 21 day fast, there's nothing I could do to get my blood sugar numbers down because the inflammation was wrecking havoc on my body. So in February, I started Enebril, which is a new, it's very similar. It's in the same family as Humira, but it hasn't caused hyperglycemia. So I got to day, what, five, day four, day five, day six, one of the early days in the fast and my blood sugar numbers were already coming down and my ketones were already going up. So I was like, okay, cool. I don't think I'm gonna have to do a 40 day fast. So I said, oh, you know what? I'm gonna do 14 days. And by day 10, my body said, my brain said, nah, shut it down, shut it down. So I, I stopped fasting on the, I think day 10 is the last day that I fasted and I broke my fast the next day. Um, I think it was several different things. I think number one, I was mentally exhausted. I was mentally and emotionally exhausted from just being, just having to fast. Like, <clears throat> I think because I went into fasting with a goal to get my blood sugars down, to stay off insulin, to be under control, you know, so I could work on reversing it. And I know a lot of people go on and on about how I should be on. Just take the insulin. You're diabetic. You're always going to be diabetic. But that's that's not necessarily the case. The science is showing that you can reverse diabetes with a low carb, you know, low carb diet, getting the weight off. You know, you're like basically carbohydrates, starches, potatoes, grains, all of those things are basically toxic to me. And my body has a very low threshold for carbohydrates. And it's gotten even worse since I've, <laughs> since I've been fasting. Um, because fasting is basically an elimination diet. The only thing I was intaking was water and fasting drops, which were basically electrolyte drops. So my blood sugar numbers have came down, my ketones were high, and I thought, okay, I can just maintain this and I can keep going. Um, and that's, that's, unfortunately, that's not what happened. My blood sugar went right back up. I'm 245 right now, I think. <laughs> Maybe 250. 245. Um, my seven day average is like 197. I have barely, 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 like, had any days in range. And when I very first stopped, I had, I was doing so well. Like, so flipping well and I'm not really sure what flipped the switch in my body so the the problem I had with the 21 day fast was I gained 30 pounds back in like a week um because of edema I didn't have that issue at the beginning I am suffering from edema now I don't know what the hell is causing it but it's there and it's there and it's happening so um what I've learned or what I've gathered from being off this past last last week is that my body is just super 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 sensitive to carbs so i took last week off kind of like i i wasn't doing like i was just i got rob to get me a loaf of the keto bread and i had you know a bacon and turkey sandwich for a few days 
Uh, I've had some eggs. I what else did I eat last week? Uh, that was really it. Eggs. I made bacon one day, so I had some bacon. Uh, I don't remember. But so, other than the Aldi bread. I was basically staying very low carb. And the Aldi bread is keto friendly. It does have wheat products. Um, it has vital wheat gluten, which is basically gluten. And then it also has, um, was it a wheat protein? I don't remember what it was. I did a Friday or an air about it. And normally it didn't bother me, but this time it did. The other thing that's been bothering me is diet soda. So I know diet soda isn't good for me anyway, and I shouldn't have it. Um, but I had some, and that is definitely one that I, I don't need anyway, and I'm going to have to go off of it. And then erythritol and monk fruit. So I had Rebel ice cream. I don't remember what day it was. But Rob wanted Ben and Jerry's, and I was like, ooh, I could eat some Rebel, and my blood sugar went up. And it could have been from the dairy also, but I think it was more so from the sweeteners, because I really hadn't had much sweetness over the last couple of months. So, and Stevia drove it up. <laughs> so it's been all of these things that have really been driving up the blood sugar and it's staying where it is. So I've also been eating like moon cheese and I've had some macadamia nuts. So I'm going to have to eliminate nuts from my diet. So I'm, I'm, blah, 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 blah. I'm eliminating diet soda. I'm eliminating um, any kind of water enhancer. My body says no, no, no. Um, did I say that? It's okay. I think I did. Kool-Aid. Rob has the Walmart brand sugar-free Kool-Aid. My body said no, no, no. <laughs> Splenda. I had um, a Trenta iced coffee with two Splenda and it jacked my blood sugar up. And like I said, so all of these low-carb sweeteners, my body is saying nope, 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 hard nope. Stevia is not as bad as the other ones and why I'm going to stick with Stevia is a little goes a long way. What is it, like 200 times sweeter than sugar? So one little packet in a 20 ounce coffee is plenty sweet for me. And what, what is so telling is before, I think I put three, three Splenda or three Stevia per 20 ounce coffee. So it's amazing what goes, like what your body goes through when you do basically an elimination diet. So, those like so nuts artificial sweeteners um possibly dairy and i say possibly because i'm i'm just not sure the other issue is the fucking weather <laughs> and um my inflammation is up so that's also part of the issue that texas weather has been wickety whack since the snow snowmageddon or snow copalips or whatever we're supposed to be getting a cold front tomorrow i don't know if it's a cold front but we're getting a front and i have been in so much pain the last two weeks it's been ridiculous um i've had to have a patch on my like my rib cage so with my opll which is the disease in my spine that causes the ligaments to calcify and then with the stenosis which makes the spinal canal small um, the nerves are being compressed. And if you've never experienced nerve pain, it's the worst pain you will ever experience in your whole entire life. Probably other than childbirth, I've never had, you know, given birth, but it is the most painful, awful thing you will ever experience. I feel like, to me it is. And I have nerve pain in my neck, I have it like in my thoracic spine, and I have it in my lower back. And the, and the, like the last week has been awful. Um, before my rheumatoid arthritis symptoms were basically on my left side. I don't know why, but they were on my left side. And then this past couple of days, my right, like my right hand has been swollen and been really bothering me. My right knee has been swollen and really bothering me. So on Monday, I'm going to call my rheumatologist and see if we can bump up my inebral, um, you know, dose because it's just not it's just not helping as much as the Humira did, um, but unfortunately the Humira drove up my blood sugar, so it's not something it's not something I can take. Um, I've also had issues with some allergies. I don't know if it's allergies or what, but like my glands have been really tender and swollen. Um, I've been dealing with a lot of 
snotty stuff. <laughs> Um, I haven't had a headache, so I don't think it's a sinus infection, but it's allergy season. So it's, it's like, it's not one thing. Like, and that's what's so frustrating about being a diabetic is it's not one thing. I can't point at this and go, this is the reason why my blood sugar is in the 200s. This, this right here is the reason why. <laughs> that's not how it works. Any little thing, any little thing can cause you to have blood sugar issues and I don't think people who I don't think people understand that like being emotional well you know messes with the blood sugar not getting you know eight hours of sleep messes with the blood. like there's so the weather the bari bariatric pressure like there's so many fucking things that can really wreak havoc on your body and it's re it's really really frustrating so I went back and forth on what I was gonna do for the rest of the month because I'm taking it one to two weeks at a time. I don't wanna say, oh, for the entire month of April, I'm gonna do this. Um, I thought I wanted to start alternate day fasting and I was gonna do two, one. So two fasting, one eating. I was gonna start that last Monday and I woke up that morning and I was like, I can't. I, I just mentally cannot fast right now. Um, I really think my body needs a break. Um, I really feel like my brain needs a break. And I'm just frustrated. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just frustrated. And I just need not to worry about it. So I go see my doctor on the 23rd. I have a feeling my A1C is going to be at least 8, maybe even higher. We'll see. But I'm not going to worry about it because I know that I'm taking the right steps that I need to do to get where I'm going to be. So when I ended my 21-day um, fast back in January, I was 300 and 347 pounds. Yes. No, 337 pounds. When I ended this fast, I was at 340. So like I said, I had gained back 30 pounds. So I had lost that all but three pounds. I haven't weighed since. Um, again, I... My main focus is the numbers. I do want the weight to come off, but I can't, I can't, I'm the type of person, I've said this before, I'm the type of person who gets wrapped up in numbers and I can't. I'm already wrapped up in the blood sugar. I'm trying not to check it very often. I'm trying to check it, you know, take a peek at it when I wake up, you know, see what it is around lunchtime and then take a peek before I go to bed. Um, I'm, I'm doing my hardest not to focus on it because I, I, I know that that's a part of what makes me feel just frustrated and feel awful. So I really went back and forth on what I was gonna do. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do, you know, strict carnivore, no dairy, um, et cetera. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna do regular keto. I'll do 80, 15, five. And then I was like, okay, I don't wanna do any of that. <laughs> I don't wanna fast. I don't want to count macros. I don't want to just eat, you know, beef or just meat for the week. So what I've decided to do for the rest of the month is just eat as low carb as possible. So I have a few recipes that I'm going to be making. Um, Rob is um, doing the grocery shopping as we speak. So let me pull up what they are from Pinterest and I will do my best to leave this linked down below. And all of the ones that I am picking. So the first is a keto cauliflower broccoli ham salad recipe. There's a picture, I'll try to flash it up. So this has broccoli, cauliflower, black olives, mozzarella cheese, Parmesan cheese, cherry tomatoes, which I'm not getting, and then um, you make a vinaigrette with white wine vinegar, uh, olive oil, and then a couple of spices. So one thing that I loved when I was eating, you know, the standard American diet was cold pasta salad. My most favorite pasta salad ever in my life is the tomato basil pasta salad from La Madeleine. But a close second is just a regular old pasta salad with the Italian dressing and then the cauliflower and the broccoli and the cheese. Like, I love that. And so this felt very reminiscent of that. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try that. Um, I'm also doing my faux potato salad. <laughs> so if you don't know what that is, I have a, a potato salad, like a southern potato salad recipe. This is the one it is, Old Fashioned Southern Potato Salad. Again, I'll have these linked down below. And instead of cooked potatoes, I use raw cauliflower. I also don't put the eggs in because the eggs is just to make it creamy, is what someone said. 
And I, I don't know that I've ever had eggs in potato salad, so it's not something I want to start. But it's literally, you know, just cauliflower and then like your dressing, which is basically mayonnaise, mustard, pickle juice, and pickles, and a little bit of onion. It's so good. I could eat it every day of my life. It's just so good. So that's what I'm making. And then a broccoli salad. I don't remember where that pen went. Let me see. But broccoli salad, broccoli salad. But basically it's broccoli, it's bacon, there's a little bit of cheese in it, and then it's like mayonnaise and apple cider vinegar. Um, it, and it, normally it calls for a little bit of sweetener, but I probably won't put any sweetener in mine. Um, if I was standard American diet, it would be Miracle Whip. I know not very many people love Miracle Whip, That's not, but that's what I grew up on. We didn't eat mayonnaise. Where is the gosh darn broccoli salad now? I know I pinned it. <laughs> I know I pinned it. Keto broccoli <laughs> salad. There it is. So that's, this is the recipe I'm using. Again, I'll link all these down below. For protein, I am making the Diet Dr. Meatloaf. If you missed it, Wes from Highfalutin Low Carb, he did a meatloaf battle, and that one is the one he said was really, really good. I don't know if I'll make the gravy. I haven't looked at the recipe, but I've been craving meatloaf, something awful. I've been craving mashed potatoes and gravy and meatloaf from Boston Market, so this is my way <laughs> of kind of like stopping that, you know, stopping that in the thing. Um, I... Another protein I'll probably have is chicken wings. I have some chicken wings um, that I need to eat up, and Rob doesn't eat chicken wings, so that's something I can have for lunch. Um, there's also, like we have ground, you know, ground chucks. I can have some hamburger meat, I've got some bacon. So I have plenty of protein, and then with these kind of vegetable salads, I'm getting a good, you know, a good amount of fat from the mayonnaise. Um, other than the, you know, the cheat, like I'm, I'm not giving a dairy completely, but I am, you know, just going to have it in these few little things. And it's not a whole lot of cheese anyway. So um, the only other dairy I'm going to allow myself to have. I mean, I'm, you know what? I should, I, I'm going to keep dairy. I'm going to keep dairy. We're going to see what happens. Um, if my blood sugar doesn't come down, I may have to give up dairy for a little bit. It won't be forever. It won't be forever. Listen, I can't give up all these cars. I can't. I can't. I need cheese. I need it for my sake. <laughs> Sanity. I need it for my sanity. So we'll see. So that's what I'm going to do going forward. I am not setting a schedule for eating. I'm going to eat intuitively. Um, I'll probably wake up every morning and have either an iced coffee or a bulletproof coffee. And then that normally keeps me full three, four, five hours. And then I will eat. I'm probably going to keep it to one meal a day, um, just like, again, intuitively. So if there's a day where I'm just not hungry, I'm just not going to eat. If there is a day where I'm starving, where I'm having to eat the world day, I will probably eat. But I'm not going to say, oh, you can't have anything to eat. I'm not setting an eating window. I'm really going to stick to eating intuitively. And eating, like eliminating all of the artificial that I can while keeping, you know, the stevia. So... It's going to be, it'll be interesting to see what my blood sugar does. Um, I think eating earlier in the day may help. Um, I know Oscar from I Hack Diabetes on, um, he's on Instagram and I think he has a YouTube channel now. He was talking about how he did better when he had a little bit of protein when he first wake, woke up. So that's something I'll keep an eye out on um, and we'll just see what happens. But yeah, so that's the plan going forward to the end of the month. Um, I just, I just am not in a mental state or emotional state where I can focus on, you know, counting macros, um, going completely without. I just, I th like, like I said, it's ninety percent mental, and I really feel like I just need a break. Um, five months of long-term fasting was a lot. I feel like my body needs a break. Um, and I just want to see what happens going low carb. So I'm not going to worry about my weight. The only thing I'm worried about are my ketones, which I think I'm out of ketosis, and my, um, and my blood sugar numbers. So 
yeah, the ketones, I don't know what did it. Um, it could have been the diet soda. It could have been the water enhancer. It could have been the um, diet soda. Did I say diet soda first? Diet soda, macadamia nuts, water enhancer. Like it's one of those kind of, it's one of those. It's one of those that knocked me out of ketosis. I don't know which one, but they did. So it's going to be... Um, you know, trying to trying to get back back there, but yeah. So a lot of cauliflower and a lot of broccoli this week. So a lot of fiber. We'll see what happens. But I really appreciate you guys sticking with me um, and being so supportive. I I may do full days. I'll probably do. Hmm. What am I gonna do? Maybe I'll do like two days of eating and then post it, and then two days of eating and then post it. Um, I don't feel like I have enough going on to do a vlog every day. Um, oh, the, you know what? The other issue is going to be my brand new computer has to go and get fixed. So I may be out without a computer for a little bit. So we'll see. There's something going on with... Um, we thought it was just the keyboard because it's like you're holding down the keys. But it's not the keyboard. I got a brand new keyboard. It's not the keyboard. So there's something going on with the hardware. So I have to take it to the Apple store and, or one of the Apple retailers and get, get it fixed. So I won't have any, I guess I could try to edit on my phone. I don't know. You'll get videos when you get videos. If you want to keep up with me, check me out on Facebook or Instagram. That's kind of the easiest place to go, especially if I can't edit, you know. So yeah, that's, this video was probably all over the place, but um Hopefully increasing, did I say I wanted to increase my nub roll? Hopefully increasing my nub roll, if that's possible. Um, you know, f getting basically no wheat products. That Aldi bread, I think it was might have been the wheat that was causing the inflammation. Again, it could have been the dairy. We'll see this week. But again, it's hard to pinpoint because there's so many things that, you know, that can really affect it. But that's it. I'm tired of talking. I appreciate you guys. Um... Probably in April, I will go to alternate day fasting or, you know, stick with one meal a day. Whatever seems to be working with the blood sugar is what I hope to continue. Um, we are March 13th. Today's March 13th. And I haven't had any kind of starch or anything else since January 8th. So I'm doing pretty good on that I really did want the Boston Market and I really wanted KFC and I haven't been doing it um Fridays Rob and I have been getting in and out so we'll probably continue that his birthday is next Friday he may go get pizza I don't know he's really busy right now so we'll have to see what happens but yeah that has that is that's kind of where we're at that's kind of what's going on that's my brain that's my plan um, again, I will try to leave everything linked in the description box down below. If I forget, someone please remind me. Um, one last thing I want to address before I sign off. So I posted that little rant about Texas and COVID and all this other stuff. And there have been, there's one person who I ended up blocking. But if you make, if your comment is inappropriate, YouTube will get that before I get a chance to it. So I'll still get an email telling me what your comment was, but YouTube won't post it. So I got this, oh my gosh, it was awful about, I mean, it was just so derogatory against the Chinese people. Um, I hate that people call this the Chinese virus. It's just, it's just, I've already, I've already had this conversation with you guys. So when you email me or when you comment and say, stop deleting my comment, it's not me, it's YouTube. So if you post an inappropriate comment, it's gonna get deleted, not by me, it's gonna get deleted by YouTube. So, and then I'm gonna block you because I don't put up with racist, racial bullshit. I just don't. So anyway, that's it. I'm gonna go, I'm waiting on Uber to bring me something to eat. And yeah, that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Like I said, I don't know what's really gonna happen over the next couple of weeks. I'll keep you posted on Instagram or Facebook. Um, and yeah, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you real soon. Bye for now. Bye for now. Can I put...
sunglasses on.